The same four forces of lift, weight, thrust and drag exist in a climb, but some of them have been tilted. Both weight and drag are acting rearwards, trying to prevent the aircraft from climbing. These two forces can be combined into one resultant force acting rearwards. In order for the aircraft to remain in a steady climb, an equal and opposite resultant force must be created by the combined effects of lift and thrust. Although the two resultant forces are equal and opposite, a closer inspection shows that not all of the four forces are equal. Weight can be divided into two components, one component opposing the lift and the other acting parallel to the relative airflow. The lift is now slightly reduced since the weight component opposing it is reduced. The rear weight component acts in the same direction as drag, effectively increasing the total drag. To balance the forces and maintain a steady climb, thrust must increase to compensate for the rear weight component. A common misunderstanding is that lift is what makes the aircraft climb. From this diagram, we can see that in a climb, lift is always less than weight, and it is the thrust that makes the aircraft climb. So we can say for an aircraft in a climb, any increase in weight or drag will always reduce the climb performance, and any increase in the thrust will improve the climb performance. This is why most training aircraft use full power in a climb, as maximizing the excess thrust will maximize the climb performance.